Hey everyone, welcome back. So today, we're going to be reviewing the PowerA Wired Enhanced Controller. Now this is a controller I picked up on Black Friday. And for any of you who've seen my unboxing video, well it was featured in that video as well. Now, just before we get started, I'm going to let you know that my uh, controller review process, I flipped it around a little bit. We're going to be spending a little more time on the features and exactly how the controller feels and how it works. Because I think a lot of comments that you guys left out there was that that was missing from my reviews. And, and I agree with you guys. And now since I have my second close-up camera, well, we'll be able to do that easily. And just before we get started, another quick message. I just want to really thank everyone out there who's been liking, subscribing, and commenting on my videos over the past two months. Because my channel has really been on the upswing for the last two months. And I haven't taken the time to thank all of you out there that have been doing it. And I just want to invite you guys to not forget to keep liking, subscribing to my channel if you aren't already, and leaving comments down below because it really helps the channel out a lot. And since my channel is on an upswing, well, that's why you guys have been getting more regular and even more content over the last couple of months. And the more support I get, the more I'll be able to deliver, you know, quality and regular content. So once again, I just want to thank you guys all out there and just, you know, keep going and we'll keep growing together. So thanks a lot. So here we are. We have the PowerA Enhanced Wired Controller. And by the way, the first thing I want to point out is that you have two versions of this controller. You have the PowerA Wired Controller and you have the PowerA Enhanced Wired Controller. Now this is an enhanced controller, but basically what's going to separate to the two controllers, because it's the same feel, it's the same build on both controllers, is that the enhanced version has a 3.5 millimeter earphone jack here at the bottom, meaning that you can actually plug your headset into the enhanced version and when you're playing, you know, a, a certain distance away from the television. And that's a really, really nice option. And generally they're almost sold for close to the same price. Like often there's like three, four dollars separating the enhanced version from the regular one. So if you are looking for a 3.5 millimeter jack, make sure that your power controller says enhanced. And secondly, uh, you've probably noticed, I've been saying this is a wired controller, but there's no wire in it right now. It's simply because this is another really positive aspect of this controller. The wire is actually detachable, which is something that is really positive and I really like because it really helps when you carry the controller around. The only sort of downside is that rather than using a uh, USB type C, they've used micro USB. However, at the same time, the way it plugs in is it, it fits really deeply into the socket, meaning that you don't get that problem with a micro USB where you can sometimes damage the connector because it's more fragile than a USB type C. So although on the downside, it is a micro USB on the upside, because of the way they've made it connect, you don't have the issue where you can damage it being a USB, a micro USB. Now, if we look at the general feel of this controller, What's important to notice, number one, and unfortunately you can't see this on camera, is unfortunately this is a really light controller. It's actually the lightest controller, controller I've tried yet for the Nintendo Switch, including the Hori Pad and the uh, Hori uh, GameCube type controller. This is really the lightest of them all. And if you don't like that, you're not gonna like this controller. And me personally, I would have liked a little more weight to it. But when it's plugged in, because it's a wired controller, it's a it's a little better. So it's not as bad. But they could have really done. I could have really done with a little bit of weighing down on this controller. Feature-wise, the controller is pretty basic. It does not have rumble. It does not have NFC, and it does not have motion controls. Being a wired controller, however, there are two programmable buttons at the back, and we'll be looking at how they work because that is another really positive point about this PowerA controller. It's that these programmable buttons can be programmed really easily and you can even program them to directions on the D-pad or on pressing down on the thumbsticks, which a lot of programmable controllers don't allow you to do. And in some games, it can be really be useful because it's a lot easier to use those back programmable buttons than hit down on the on the control stick especially if you're moving your character at the same time as sometimes you have to hit that button 
So that is a really, really positive aspect. And I'm going to show you guys later that it works. You can actually program the back buttons to any of the front face buttons, including the D-pad and the, R the R3 and L3 uh, sticks. So for going over the features, I plug this into my USB stand on my switch light, just because we're going to look at how we can program that button in a minute. But I wanted to give you guys the, you know, the look it is once the wire is installed. And we're gonna go over really quickly the feel of the controller of the buttons. Now the buttons are nice and responsive. They're not mushy. They're very, cl they're closer to clicky buttons than mushy buttons. And the triggers are the same. They're very responsive. I like them a lot, okay? The thumbsticks also have a nice drawback. So I like that because for like Smash Brothers, if you do decide to play with this controller and you just wanna sort of smack it to the side it has it, it really comes back to its initial position very quickly so there's some nice response there on the thumbsticks and my favorite part of this controller is the d-pad this so far on a pro controller is the best d-pad for fighters if you play traditional 2d fighters or if you play dragon ball z fighters and you want to play with a traditional D, uh, a traditional pro pad this is the best one i've seen so far the only thing you want to be careful with power a is they make a lot of different designs you basically want to get a D-pad with a matte finish because they also make D-pads with a shiny finish, but the feel on the shiny D-pads is a lot weaker than on the matte one. It's still good on the shiny controllers. I would say better than most of the other pro controllers out there, but if you are really into 2D fighters and you want a very responsive D-pad, you want to get one with a matte finish, it won't destroy your thumb as you're playing. Basically, especially if you play games like Street Fighter with a lot of motions, uh, you're gonna wanna switch to a pro controller from Power Ray. In my opinion, it's the best D-pad I've found so far. Now, I've turned the switch light on. As you can see, when your controller's powered on, you have a little button here at the front. And we're gonna go through the process of programming the buttons really quickly. So basically, to program the buttons, you have a button here in the middle. It's hard to see on the camera, but you have like a, a smaller button here on, in the center. What you're gonna do is you're gonna hold it down three seconds. So I just wanna show you the front because you get a response from the LED. There. Once you hold it down for three seconds, that means that it's in programming mode. You're gonna simply hit the button you want to, the back button to become. I'll have to start that over again because I'm talking too much. So hold it down till it flashes. You press the button you want it to become. So I press the thumbstick, it flashes quicker, and then you hit the back button that you want it to become. Now I hit the back button here on the right. So now here with my switch light out, as you can see, we're on the uh, button test screen. So if I go through the buttons, you see that they're responding. And we programmed, remember the back button to be our trigger here. So if I hit the back button, it's responding as the right trigger, which is actually, like I said, a really positive thing. And if we reprogram it really quickly, so hold it down three seconds. Let's say I hit the down on the D-pad, then I hit that same right trigger. Now it's become down on the D-pad. So it's something that is really positive about this controller is that the programmable back buttons are really quick and easy to program and you can program as, then, as any of the face buttons. And by the way, if you want to unprogram that button because you don't want to hit it in a different game, you just hold down uh, the program button in the back and then you hit directly the, dire the back button that you programmed and now it's not responding as anything. So that's the basic functionality. It's not any harder than that. So that's it for our, the overview of the controller. I hope you guys appreciate that new section of my controller reviews. I think it was really something lacking. Let me know in the comments down below, please, if you appreciated it, because I'll, I'll adjust my future reviews based on what you guys give me as feedback. Now let's move on to the scoring for this controller. So we're still gonna keep the, all, the same sections as we did before. We're just gonna skim through them a little quicker since we're gonna focus more on the overviews now. So first up for the controller, we're gonna look at the build and overall feel of the controller. And in this section, I'm gonna be giving it a three out of five. I would have actually really liked to score it higher than that because the controller does look well-built, 
but unfortunately, because it's so light, it makes it feel cheaper than it probably is. And had they weighed it down just a little bit, the feel would have actually easy been, it would have been easy for me to give it a four out of five, but as it stands now, at the weight it has, we're gonna be going with a three out of five. If we move on to now the features and aesthetics, for a wired controller, this controller is gonna be scoring very solidly at a seven out of 10. It is missing the rumble, it is missing the NFC, and it is missing the motion controls, but at the same time, it's offering a 3.5 millimeter jack for the headphones, which is in something that I really appreciate because I do play sometimes late at night with my kids in bed. And the fact that I can plug the headset into the controller and be further away from the TV is really a positive aspect in my opinion. And secondly, Power A, as I said earlier, is the company that offers the most variations on the aesthetics of their controllers. And it's really pleasing to have basically a controller for basically everyone whether you like mario whether you like pokemon whether you like zelda whether you like splatoon you can find a controller that power ray makes with one of those franchises on them now on to the gameplay section and as usual we're going to be dividing it into the four categories of games that i evaluate for uh, if you're interested, uh, by the way, in seeing my process more in depth, I have a video specifically on how I review controllers, which goes really into depth to how I do this scoring process. And I invite you to watch it if you really want more information on that. But if not, we're just going to be going over basic the basic sections and what the end up what the score ended up being. So first section, we have action and FPS games, and this controller performs ex very well. The clicky buttons, the responsive uh, joysticks are really a pleasure. The fact that you can program the back buttons to the D-pad and the R buttons, like I said, are excellent for melee attacks and in, in FPS games. Uh, so this controller is actually going to be getting a 9 out of 10 in this section. Had it been a wireless controller with motion control, this probably would have ended up being a 10 out of 10 in this section. Now, for the second section, we're going to be talking about 2D side-scrollers and traditional platformers. And once again, this controller scored very, very strongly. Another 9 out of 10 in this section, in my opinion. And the reason why, it's basically, it's the same thing as I mentioned earlier. This is so far the best D-pad I've found on a Pro Controller. For my personal taste, if you're serious about playing 2D side-scrollers and traditional platformers, whether you're playing with the thumbsticks or with the D-pad, this controller is going to be very responsive. It just can't hit any higher than that because it's lacking the rumble and it's lacking the motion controls. Although it's very rare that a traditional 2D, fire, 2D platformer has motion controls, the fact that there is no rumble, you do you know, miss out on that part of the experience and that's why I can't give it a perfect score nonetheless. Now, if we move on to our traditional 2D fighters. So we're talking about a Dragon Ball Fighter Z. we're talking about Street Fighter, those type of games. Well, this controller, once again, very, very good controller, and I'm giving it another 9 out of 10. So I think you guys have seen the tendency so far. This is a controller that I liked a lot. Uh, the reason it's getting the 9 out of 10, once again, is that D-pad. Finally, a manufacturer has put a little bit of effort into making a raised up D-pad that responds very well at diagonals, gives you an easy process for quarter and half circles, even 360s are, are easy on this D-pad. Um, the only reason it's not getting a perfect score is because if, it were, if there was a way to invert the D-pad with the uh, joystick for these games would be what would allow it to push it to that 10 out of 10 in this section. Uh, not having the rumble, not having the motion controls isn't really an issue for fighters because generally it doesn't respond very much to those things and that's not what you're looking for in a fighter. Like the rumble is actually going to sometimes throw you off rather than help you in those games. And our last section that we look at is our racing games and our basically you no know, kart games. So we're looking at Mario Kart, Sonic Team Racing, uh, Crash Team Racing, all those type of games. Well, this controller, it's gonna be its weakest section. I'm gonna be giving it an eight out of 10, just because these are the games that it's sometimes the funnest to have those motion controls available for, to have those rumbles, just because those games are more on the immersive experience of the gameplay rather than just having a responsive gamepad. 
and being lacking those features, well, I find that it's gonna, I'm going to be giving it an 8 out of 10 in that section because it's where it penalizes you the most to be lacking those features. Uh, however, at the same time, the gameplay is solid. If you're looking at performance in game, you're not going to be in any kind of detrimental situation with this controller. But like I said, you know, we're reviewing it is the overall experience. And that's why it's going to be scoring an 8 out of 10. So that gives an overall score for this controller of 45 out of 55. Make it a really the best scoring controller we've reviewed so far. Uh, and honestly, the only thing holding it back is the lack of a couple of features and it being a wired controller, obviously. Um, we're going to be testing out soon the wireless version of the Power Ray controller, see if it can push beyond this one. Undoubtedly it will, because overall I look quickly at the controller, has pretty much the same features, it's just wireless. But we're going to be looking at that in a separate video. In between, for $25, this is an excellent controller. So if you don't have that extra budget to go wireless, I would say the PowerAy wired controller, especially if you go with the enhanced version for the 3.5 millimeter jack, is probably your best buy right now in wired controllers. Uh, however, you know, I haven't tried all of them yet, so, you know, I could maybe find that unicorn out there that's going to beat it out. And I can especially see this controller being useful for someone looking for a second player controller, because maybe you want to go wireless for your main controller, but if you want to have a controller available when a friend comes over or you want to play a two-player game and you don't want to give the person, you know, the Joy-Cons and say, you know, work your way out with that, it's actually a cheap alternative to a really decent second-player controller. So, as usual, I hope you guys really liked this review. Uh, please don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe if you aren't already. And also hit that notification bell if you want to know when all my videos are coming out. As I said, I really want to push the channel forward and hit that 2,000 subscribers within the next couple of months. So, you know, I hope I can get the help of all of you out there to hit that. Uh, I'm going to be leaving affiliate links, by the way, down below to everything I've shown in this video. So if you want to pick anything up, uh, please use those links. It does help the channel out a little bit. It gives me a kickback. And for you guys, it doesn't cost you anything extra. And as usual, I hope I'll catch all of you in my next video.